Yo, 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 what is up, you guys? So, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I set up uh, Ableton or any other DAW you want on a PC to use the SIO drivers, which is our, which is those really great low latency, low buffer size drivers, um, how to use that to stream or record on a screen capture. So, uh, let's switch over to Ableton now. So, uh, basically, I'm going to take you through this, but the magic little tool that helps to have is the SIO link uh, application. So this is version 1.42, and I will link their website down below. And they were actually really helpful for getting me this, uh, helping me get this work. So all you got to do is just get this, install it, and in Ableton, you will go to your preferences, and instead of using any of these other crappy drivers, you're just going to stick to the good old SIO, and then you're going to set your audio device to the SIO link, which is this application right here. So when you open up Ableton and you set it to this, this window will pop up, and you just got to make sure you set this to your interface. Uh, these two boxes will be checked. Don't check on this box. Uh, this, you can register it through here, and um, if you have two ins, two outs, you basically just set up your sound card the same way. So my inputs, outputs, if you have eight ins, eight outs, you know, it would be like eight ins, eight outs. And so you get the picture. So the main important thing here is you have the SIO output to stereo mix, which is actually what OBS or any screen capture device will need. So this, you have to make sure these are green and all that. So just check these two like that. So um, other than that, everything else doesn't really matter. Um, the network is kind of just for if you want to jam with someone over a connection, you can kind of do that like this. Um, but for my purposes, no way. So yeah. So this will pop up, like I said, and this is basically the setup for these two. So now we're going to go over here to our control panel into our sound and our, uh, sound, our device manager. So maybe it's just better if I take you through it like this. So if I click here, oh, it's already open. So whatever's in playback. We're going to set our default device to speakers, the SIO VAD driver, and in properties, which is the right click away, um, we're going to make sure that our bit size and everything else is set to what Ableton is set to. So 48,000 hertz and 24 bit is what I'm using. So this has to match across the board here and Ableton, OBS, all that. So this is important here. So let's close this down and. Uh, you notice I also have my line out uh, USB interface as my default communications device. So um, if you, you know, when you're not using Ableton and you're not streaming, you can just set it back to this. But when you're doing this, you need to set that as your default. And now if we go recording, we'll see that the mix SIO VAD driver is my default device. So again, let's right click this properties, advanced. You notice that this is the same again, so that's important. Um, nothing else going on here, so you can see that what's going on there. And so really keeping it simple is how to really get this to work. I messed it up by making everything too complicated or overthinking the routing. So if you look in here in my recording, nothing else is going on. A lot of things are disabled. And so that's really it for this stuff. So let's put that away. Uh, let's close the preferences. And let's look at OBS now. So let me pull OBS off my other monitor. Let's put this up here. So uh, let's uh, put it on, actually, I need this. So in settings here now, inside the OBS, what we're going to do is go to audio. And you would think that we would set send the stereo mix to our desktop audio device. But unfortunately, because OBS is sometimes very weird with audio, especially when it comes to SIO, uh, what we're going to do is uh, just set it to, uh, you know, whatever you want. If you want to just set it to your uh, interface outputs or anything like that or default, it really doesn't matter because this is actually going to do nothing. So, you know, you don't even have to mess with that because we're going to receive Ableton audio through the auxiliary audio device. So normally this is where you would route a microphone or something like that, but you're going to have to do that through Ableton to hear it. So we're going to set the mix as I O V A D driver to this, and now you will hear what Ableton plays through uh, OBS. So now M Ableton will play through this. And that's actually how you're hearing my voice. If you hear my voice, it's coming through Ableton. So 
right here, this channel right here, that's my mic. So um, I'll show you that how I set that up in a second, but let's go back to OBS real fast. So I just also want to show you that if I play something uh, like this, you actually can hear that. So it's, sorry if that took a while, it's just I'm still getting used to setting up the commands and uh, and stuff. So I have sort of a push to talk sort of system worked out so I don't feedback. Because the way this works is anything I hear through my monitors um, is actually what's going to be playing into OBS. But since I have a mic out, that will create a feedback. So uh, let's throw this to the side now and let me show you how to kind of set up a mic now in Ableton. So it kind of sucks that uh, OBS, I can't route this mic another way into it now, but it's actually kind of a blessing in disguise because now I can limit my mic and apply the gain that I need, you know, so I can not have my input too high on my microphone to hear my room and I can just bring up a limiter like this. So um, also I can apply a gate. So when I don't talk, you'll see the gate will shut down. So when it's yellow, that means it's closed. And so when I start talking, it opens up. And so this, these are my settings, but you're going to have to do this according to however you set your gain and all that. So that really depends on how you set it up. But these are my settings if you come close to my gain and all that. And I just put a little EQ just to kind of make it a little bit warm. So I just cut out a little bit 3K, kind of similar to what a phone does, you know, when it wants to cut out some background noise, it kind of cuts around there. And it also makes your voice warmer. So um, you know, I don't want to apply a crazy EQ or anything like that, just cutting off a little highs and lows. I really don't even need it there. Um, it's kind of more just transparent, but anyway, so this is what's on my mic uh, channel, but that's not really important because what's important is um, this right here. So I route this to my interface just like you normally would when you're recording something. You set this to input, not auto or off. I'm sending it to sends only, but you don't even need to really do that because anytime it's playing, you're going to hear it and it's going to create a feedback. So right now, as I'm talking, my monitors are cut. So that way, there's no feedback. If I, I'm going to bring up my monitors again, and you're going to hear a feedback as I keep talking. So la la la, feedback, feedback, yeah, feedback. feedback. So not cool. And so the way I, I can, there's two ways I can avoid the feedback is I just cut my monitors when I'm talking. And then when I play something, you know, uh, you got you know i won't hear it unless i bring up my monitors so i've set up sort of a push to talk sort of thing so in ableton the great thing is you can set up uh, key mapping so control k uh, i can key map the speaker on and off for this track which is my mic so i routed that to the right bracket on my keyboard which is a key i don't ever use so i do a lot of key mapping so i know which keys i don't use and i can use for that kind of stuff so Again, that's just one that I'll use for the speaker on and off. So take that off. And if I press the right bracket, uh, you won't be able to hear me talking. So I'm going to just keep talking. Can you hear me now? You can hear me now. So that's how that works. And so that's actually pretty useful. If I want to, like, say I'm doing another science tutorial or something like that, um, when I'm talking, you know, I'll just turn off my mic and let it play and then bring up my volume so I can hear it. And then as soon as they start talking, I just push the track on again and I cut my monitors and there's no feedback whatsoever. So you kind of have to train yourself to get used to that. Um, but once you do that, I mean, everything's going to sound great. So let's go through this again, what you need to do. You need to get the SIO link because that is actually what's going to let you bring audio into OBS. So I'm sure if you're watching this, you've already had your problems with OBS and using virtual audio cables or two interfaces or whatever. Um, those ways can work. I just couldn't figure it out. So this is my solution to that. This costs like $20. It's a lifesaver. And I kind of don't like the virtual audio cable way of doing it. So let's go preferences. So Ableton, all you got to do is launch Ableton after you've installed the ASAO link. Set your audio device to ASAO link. So now you can stream, record, with very little latency. So that's wonderful. And it actually is better for your CPU to use this driver than anything else. And 
then after you've done that, you'll see this. Make sure you set your ins and outs properly. Don't have enabled multi, uh, multi-clients. Set it to your interface. Yeah, then you can close that. And then you go to your control panel, which um, you can quickly get to uh, through the SAO link. Uh, I kind of closed it down, but you'll see the control panel option right there. And just make sure you set certain things to your default and make sure that you have in properties matching uh, bitrate and all that. So then in recording, mix, you can see that's my default device. And of course, when I'm not using Ableton or OBS, I'll set it back to my interface so that way, you know, watching internet videos or whatever is not going through a whole path of stuff. And sometimes, you know, you'll just, it'll just be easier. And then finally, to get it into open broadcasting software or a screen recorder, you go to your settings, you set your audio, mix, uh, you set it to mix SAO VAD driver. So that's the way you do that. So um, the, the guys who make this, they're actually Ableton users. They have a YouTube channel and they show you how to set it up and all that. So if you have problems, check it out there. Um, I did it the way they showed it, but it didn't really work for me or maybe I messed it up. So one thing I did is I emailed them this photo right here. So uh, let's see if I can just put it over here. So I sent them a screenshot of my three monitors. So the way you screenshot is uh, the Windows button and print screen. And that will uh, do a screenshot for you. So what I sent them was my Ableton preferences, uh, a little control panel on one. Uh, so this is one monitor. So I have the control panel, uh, Ableton preferences on another monitor. I put the Azio Link uh, uh, devices right here. And actually, they told me to lose one of these. I was using two of them, so I, I kind of, again, messed it up. I saw another person on YouTube uh, do this, and it worked for them. But when I did it, it didn't work for me. So, you know, it, it kind of shows you that setting up these kind of things, they work great and beautifully and simply, but uh, it just takes a better mind to understand it. So, um, and then on the, my third monitor, which is, you know, where I usually put OBS. I put uh, the settings, my audio settings there and there. So I sent this to them and they quickly replied and they told me I messed up my settings in the OBS and to change something in Ableton and uh, to lose one of these. So everything I told you is what they told me. So if you have problems for any reason, take a screenshot of all this kind of stuff, send it to them and they'll be able to spot out what's wrong. And you could always visit their website, their YouTube channel. Um, you'll find their YouTube channel through their website, which I'll link to you. Um, so yeah, there's actually uh, you, you can actually use this to network and all that stuff. But I'm not really going to talk about that. So I'm sure now you just want to try this out for yourself to start streaming Ableton or DAW uh, of choice. I'm pretty sure this will work with Cubase, FL, any of those. So. Um, this is one of those life-saving kind of applications. So it's only $20. Um, it really is worth getting to do this kind of stuff. And you should do it. So anyways, I've talked for a long time. So thanks, guys, for watching. Not one of my typical tutorials, but I'm sure a lot of you people watching this desperately needed this information. So thanks for watching. And of course, lates.